Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's round where we're talking about work-life balance. Thank you. Yeah, so it's been, I guess, two weeks since I dropped my last episode and we... On my last episode, I spoke about um, how to be a tech bro with Tim and it was actually a fun one because I was able to learn a lot from him and actually see insights to a lot of things he spoke about and I got a lot of feedback from most of the listeners that listened to that episode about how it helped them and it actually shed more light on some of the struggles they were having in getting to tech in the first place and actually it's one of the first thing, first time that I, yeah I've had episodes that I've spoken about things that it got to people but this since it's my field and I feel it's a bit more personal for me because I wish I had some sort of like a template or a guide when I was starting up my tech career, but I didn't have any because it was a very funny story, Shah, but yeah, I didn't have any. That's that's what was interesting. But it was fun, like getting people's feedback and some of people that have actually been in tech for a while. And I was like, wow. So (laughs) at first I was a little shocked that they listened to the episode and the second I was actually shocked that they would have something to give me as a feedback. But yeah, thank you to every of my listeners. I don't think I've said this enough or I've said it at all. Thank you to everyone, everyone for your support. I think this is season two and this is our fifth episode so far. Fifth or fourth episode. <laughs> yeah. But well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah. So I'm um, getting to the topic for today. We're talking about work life balance. The I think the breadth of <laughs> burnout. So for me personally, because um as this whole podcast is about topics that resonate with me and how I've actually gone about solving these problems, especially how I work, how now how I live, I guess. But yeah, work-life balance. Um, so I would want to start from my early career. So, but a quick background story, or a quick note. So I'm a software developer. I've been, I've been in tech, or I've been working since 2017. I started late 2017, specifically uh, May June. Yeah, June. I started June 2017, and ever since then, that's been a fun ride. With I guess some burnouts, but. <laughs> Fun right, yeah, fun right. So, um, so my career actually started in 2017, as I said earlier, and it started with it's not saying like I wanted to like okay, I was thinking about how to get a job or something. No, it actually started from I volunteered for like two years, so I volunteered from 2017 and 2018, so that's two years, yeah. So I went for a program and I loved the idea of the company and okay, I was like, can I volunteer just to even learn and yeah. And I was like, yeah, and I wanted to build a website. So it was more of like a win-win for me. I work for the organization at the same time, learn how to build stuff. And for, with working there, I actually discovered that I love to teach people things and I love to actually make impact on other people's life. And it was awesome. So it was like the perfect setting for me to actually kick off my career. Um, so then I had a mentor, yeah, Mr. Tommy, and he was going to actually put me through learning how to build a website using WordPress then. But something interesting happened. He got a visa and he traveled abroad. He got, I, I think he got into school also for his master's there about and traveled abroad, I think a month or two after I got there. So there was nobody to teach me <laughs> how to use WordPress, but I had to like, Figure that out on my own with a lot of videos and trying to mess with things on my system and formatting my system a couple of times just to get ZAMP server up and running and stuff like that. So, but this was like how it started, and I think that's the kind of pace I had going forward in my career. So, because Trying to set things up on my own without like, okay, having someone to actually hold my hands and walk me through this process eventually turned out to be the biggest um, advantage I've had in my career, but also the biggest issue I've had in my career because I started having sleepless nights because back then I couldn't um, afford to subscribe like 10 gig or so, right? <laughs> so uh, there was midnight so MTM midnight so, but I, was, so I would have to stay awake till 12 or 11. I think it was 11 at some point, but it was 12 at some point. So you stay awake and do, um, I think 1.2 gig or 2 gig for MTM, then 1.3 gig 
on Ether, so I'll do on those two things to download videos on YouTube, watch videos. In fact, that was the first time I actually built an Android application by watching like 20 videos from YouTube channels to do each thing I wanted to do in the app. And I was having constant nights where I just sleep for like two hours and three hours and it was piling up like that, just piling up for like a month, two months, six months. And I started noticing something about me it was the fact that I started forgetting things a lot. So I could be talking to a friend and we can talk for like maybe 20 minutes and I would forget the first 10 minutes of that conversation. It made like drop the call and I may even forget half of your conversation after I dropped the call. <laughs> so, but like this was piling up and it wasn't, for me, it wasn't like a big deal because even those conversations, I just felt like we we're just talking and having fun. So it wasn't something serious. But I started having conversations that were talking about stuff that were serious. And, um, and it became very interesting that I was forgetting things. And so most of these conversations were with ladies sometimes. So, and I, I think you might, if you're a lady, sorry to say this, but guys would definitely understand the fact that when you talk to a lady and you tell her something and you forget that thing. It sounds like you're lying. But for me, I just said it. So it was like, I said these things and I would forget about what I just said. So it's like, oh, you have to remind me. I'm like, so even if I say, it looks like, guy, did you just like to have, but I knew I didn't, right? So what these things were piling up and forgetting things, zoning off in conversations, times that I would just sleep weirdly, um, my eating patterns became <laughs> worse because sometimes I'm only eat to the end of the day. Yeah, I want all these things. It's like a norm these days. And that's why I felt like I should talk about this because I'm not saying you don't have sleepless nights because of your work and how you're trying to learn and get better. I know I still sometimes have nights that I don't sleep on time and stuff like that. But ensure that you try as much as possible to have enough sleep because the interesting thing is it's like a thing in take it's a thing of pride so you tell people that i didn't sleep last night i don't sleep like back to back night and yeah it's good because you are making progress but at what cost that's the main question we should ask ourselves at what cost because if you do this for the next three four years you would eventually in fact, you won't get to three four years before you have your first burnout because I had my first burnout around that six months threshold and i didn't know it was burnout that's the interesting thing because I felt it was just a normal thing that, okay, because I wasn't sleeping enough. In fact, I didn't really realize it wasn't because I was sleeping enough. I just felt maybe work and, yeah, definitely work was a lot because I was, I had to do a lot of trainings. I had to organize a lot of people. I had a team. I was managing myself. I had to go to schools. Yeah, all these things were there. And I felt, yeah, work stress was what was causing this. Definitely work has its own part. But it's me for, from, it's now on my own end to actually ensure that I have enough sleep and rest. And also try to make time with family. So I'll get to that part later on. So yeah, taking work home, that was another thing. So it's normal these days to like, okay, especially even right now, it still happens once in a while for me. So I'm working at, office, at the office and I, I didn't finish whatever I was doing. So I take it back home with me and I try to like, okay, complete the job. And this is one interesting thing I've noticed that you just want to complete the job and that's the, you do it the first day you do it the second day and it becomes like a week and you come back from work you don't even talk to anybody you just open your laptop and you do the same thing and you do it again constantly and this becomes like a, a pattern then a habit then it's now you so it's like when you come back you you just believe you don't have time to do any other thing all you just want to do is to work and work and because of you're trying to make money definitely guys i'm not saying any, money is good right Trying to make the money is important because how do you survive? Who takes care of you? And whatever I know, no one takes care of you. So, like, it's very important, but you have to understand that. Make time for family, make time for friends. So, this part of me was, I actually noticed this as a last year. So, it was my friends and my roommates that actually made it known to me. Because they were like, Kazim, you just come back. I know you do is just work. Don't you, like, spend time. Yeah, I, in my head, I felt, I hope people right when i get back sometimes i just talk me like 10 15 minutes so i'm even on video call while i'm working you understand so but it was like okay this is becoming a problem and that was around the second time i had the second burnout which i was talking about later on and that was like okay i had to now take a break okay chill guys i when i come back from work at least i spent at least minimum one hour two hours go out because i was staying in a hostel back then and 
I just go upstairs and we always have chats, we talk. Because these things, I felt, I, what I noticed was when I started doing all these things, I was even more productive. It sounds very, <laughs> it sounds so not true. Well, it was shocking. I was more productive because I knew this because I got to work and I could think clearly. There's this thing for my profession personally, I know that you need to think. I have, in fact, 70% of my job is to think. It's 30% as to write code. So if I can't think of how to write the code, how would I write the code in the first place? So this sleep I was having, these conversations, this time that I have to take a break for my brain to like reboot and kick off for the next part of the job were very pivotal for me to actually get my job done. So it's not only about like trying to grind night after night, it's about trying to take, spend more time doing other things, taking break from work. That's what I discovered and it helped my own personal work. But I'll be talking about the other things just after we take this break. Thank you. So yeah, welcome back. So we stopped about taking breaks. Now, um, there was another thing I noticed about myself personally was I didn't have a typical social life because I thought what I had was a social life and I was comfortable with it. In fact, actually till now, I'm still comfortable with it honestly, because I found a rhythm around it. Everybody has a different definition of social life because I have to state that because I noticed that some people, what they de- 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 uh, define to be social life is different from what I actually define mine to be. I feel spending time with my friends, watching movies, eating out once in a while, spending time with family, that's social enough for me because I, yeah, I go to parties once in a while. It has to really be important for me because you're a party. I, I, I really, I'm not really like a big fan because sometimes I see it's like a waste of money. Most, most parties. Sorry to say, whoever likes party listen to this episode. But so, yeah, I feel it's a, it, that's a different topic for another day. Sorry. I feel it's a waste of money most of the time, right? But so I, I don't really enjoy going to parties because most times it's always too noisy, too rowdy trying to get food and stuff like that. That's one of the reasons I like parties. But what I consider social, my my friends, we sometimes, in fact, my roommate is like one of the person that drags me out most of the time because he wants to actually go out most of the time. So he's like, cousin, like, chill out or something. But now that he has a girlfriend, doesn't stop me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, but we still go out once in a while. That's the thing. But I had, I started like ensuring I had a conscious social life because you might say yeah you have a social life but do you even take do you have specific time in your calendar to actually take time to hang out with friends and do this thing but i feel it's important scheduling your life properly so um another thing i had to do like for myself to avoid burnout or when i had burnout to ensure it doesn't happen again was to um have a conscious relationship with god this cannot be overstated, right? Because everything I do personally, I feel it's by the grace of God. And if it's by the grace of God, I have to ensure that I commune with this God constantly because he's my maker. So I started having a specific time around night that I prayed to God. I think I spoke about this in a previous episode too. But I had a conscious time that, okay, I pray. Those other ones just to give thanksgiving. So pray to God about things, spend time with him. And this was like awesome. At some point, I was dwindling with that. So some nights I just sleep off. I noticed that some nights I just get home very tired and I just sleep off. But I try as much as possible to consciously try to spend time with God, go to church, be a worker at church. Because I feel maybe me, but growing up, we were always taught that service is like a very pivotal part of serving God. So I felt I have to be a worker in any church. I find myself I can't just go to church without actually serving God. So, so, and some of the things I actually also do for fun is to read books, um, watch movies. I already mentioned that. Uh, reading books, I discovered that in 2019. The first book I read that blew my mind was um, The Subtle Light of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Mason. It's, it's like, it's the book that made me start reading other books. And it's the book that changed a lot of my perspective about a lot of things and how to relate to people and a lot of things. So yeah, I read books. I... I actually love books, but sometimes it gets boring, no, no doubt. I, I won't lie to you. But I force myself to actually read a lot of books most times. 
to learn about people. Um, those are the things I actually do for fun. And I, I feel it, it can help anyone. So no matter your profession, five key things I think you can take away from this episode is that one, um, sleep, have enough sleep, spend time with friends and family, have a relationship with God, have some sort of social life, <laughs> and have your own form of entertainment. So it can be books, watching movies, having fun with friends, anything you want to call entertainment. So I feel this five key parts help you have a work-life balance because you don't um, just spend all your time working because you might think you have time that you, you might think you have a social life or you have a life that outside of work but you discover you don't and i think i i didn't have a, that life for the, for two years because when i started working in, i switched jobs in 2019 and from 2019 to 2020 i think i didn't have a life outside of work and church and school Still, my life is still low, work, church, and school now. But yeah, I still make friends. Like when I was staying at hostel, I started talking to other f- um, people that were not in my school, just in the hostel, because I went to Yabatek, but most people there we went to Unilag. So we, we had a lot of time. I have actual friends that I met there. So it's like a thing of pride for me because I can say I made friends outside of the, my three core triangles like my triangles are not my three quarter my triangle which is work school and church so it's very important to actually make the different um to make friends in different areas right because it, it helps in the future no doubt it's, it's one of the things i feel like it's my past my most prized possession are friends because I, I just i love to have a lot of friends not like i talk to everyone all of them constantly i, I loved my time no doubt but having friends is a very good thing that's one i think i'm interested so i always avoid as much as possible not to take work take work home it's very important because if you take work home you then have your way to actually separate your work from your personal life then it messes things up at some point yeah and that's my take for work-life balance and that's how i manage things personally so I would really love to hear your own feedback. Okay, how do you manage things? So you can always tweet at me at um, KazimCodri01 on Twitter or on Instagram. Uh, my Facebook, terrible, terrible story. <laughs> but yeah, you can always send me a mail at Durant with Kazim Kodri. Sorry, Durant with Kazim at gmail.com. And please, and please, and please, I'm begging you, please subscribe, like, share on any platform you're listening to this because it's quite important. And I feel that's like the biggest way to get the word out there about this podcast and thank you so much for listening to my rant and have an awesome and wonderful day bye